Tyler Gonzalez is next to us here. He's it's my competition for the weekend. Toyota's really uh, put the pressure on Tech Sport and Copeland Motorsports. They've like put the, I'd say, antagonists right next to each other. I'm leading the championship. Spike's right behind me in second place. We're pitted right next to each other. We race each other super clean on track, and I'm sure it'll be a great battle. Today we've got about 29 cars that'll make the grid here. here we've got a set of twins that are out uh, racing within the series. A huge group of, of participants. You've got Tyler Gonzalez, who's at the top of the points right now. Right behind him, you've got Spike Kohlbecker. You've got Mia Lavelle, kind of the first time really being out racing in the series. And speaking of first-timers, we've got Jackson Bell, you know, son of Townsend Bell, is doing fantastic in the series. You've got the brother and sister combo of, of Will and Isabella Robusto. Just a, a really diverse group of drivers out on track. As a father, this all comes as a bit of a surprise to me. Jackson has never raced before this season, never raced go-karts as a young guy. Wanted to work in racing, though. He was passionate about it, went off and worked for a Toyota NASCAR team for a year and a half, sweeping floors, delivering parts. Maybe that was the impetus enough for him to call Dad and say, hey, Dad, I really want a shot behind the wheel. My first race in VIR went better than expected for me. I came in with low expectations being my first sports car race. Showed good speed early on in practice and testing and that carried over into the race. So I was happy to get my first top 10 and then my first top five in race two at VIR. And that's the cool thing about Toyota GR Cup. If you look at these cars, it's a full-blown race car. It's got Bosch ABS, Bosch traction control, sequential gearbox, racing brakes, racing suspension, and just like the bigger GT3 cars do, it's pretty clear already, if you can be fast here, I think you can do really well at the next level. I drove this at the start of the year, and then I raced late model stocks as well. Here comes Isabella Robusto, left traffic up the road! Robusto! Oh, oh no! Terrible crash on the front straightaway. I got in a crash and had a concussion, so I'm still out right now. It gave a really cool opportunity for my brother to be able to jump in, and he's done really well um, at VIR and got third. It's uh, really cool to kind of see him in the car, too. I got the opportunity to be in the National Toyota commercials. I got to say the line of, hey, new guy, let's get you up to speed. So, um, hey, new guy, let's get you up to speed. You ready? Yep. Get up to speed? Okay. All right. I think it's definitely going to be a rain race. Looking at radar right now, it's going to rain. I think it's going to help, especially him going out and practice today and seeing like where it puddles and kind of the lines. It's a little sketchy out there. I don't know if he wants to be on his radio or not, but we'll see. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> yeah, I was fully strapped into the car, had the engine running, and um, they told us to shut it off because of lightning in the area. Not an ideal thing to have happen once you're already strapped in and kind of in the zone, ready to rip. Um, so, um, interested to see what they do, but uh, hopefully we can go race tomorrow. That's how racing goes sometimes. All day yesterday, we kind of got the short end of the stick. Uh, our qualifying got canceled, and then we were actually sitting in the cars getting ready to go on track, and they called the race due to weather. Some things are out of your control, and there's nothing we can do about it. I was scared to death. Here in Nashville, we're supposed to run on Saturday night, which would be the first night race for our series. Unfortunately, we had some weather come in, and right as we were ready to grid the cars and take the green flag, we had some lightning strikes, which unfortunately ended the night for us. We're not happy that we had to pause that, but now we're gonna try to pick up another race for them in, in Indy to try to make them for it. Could have wrecked a lot of stuff last night. I am so looking forward to this. Glad we at least got to get them on the track after last night got canceled. As this is one of my favorites to get to call. We are racing in Music City. It's a good getaway there for Tyler Gonzalez. Looks like that third place car gonna try to make a little bit of a move on to Spike Kohlbecker fanning out two, three, almost four wide. A spin there for the number 10. That is uh, the PJM BGRT entry of Mark Pombo, and it looks like Robusto and Eisman have been collected in it. Hoping everybody's his heads up here. Oh my goodness, Eisman's got uh, so much damage, not only on the rear, but on the front. It is just buckled up. Coming onto the bridge from over there onto the main side, someone got turned, and they were sitting on the left side of the track, so I thought I'm just gonna go to the right. But they had momentum going to the right, trying to get out of the way. So then they got behind me, hit me, and then it was just a whole line, and then a bunch of people from further back got by before I could get going again, so. 
I was like, well, it's still running in a straight line. Overall, it was a good run. It's just could have done better. And look at this. Despite the fact that that battle was going on, Will Robusto continuing to fight. Yeah, I got hit in the rear pretty hard. Almost got up into the wall in turn 10. Just scraped the inside wall a few times trying to use all the road. Unfortunately, we do indeed have a full course yellow. Tyler Gonzalez up at the front of the field in the number 57 machine for Copeland Motorsports. Gonna come across the line and take the checkered flag. It is yet another victory here for Gonzalez, your championship leader, extending his advantage at the front of the field. Good stuff by uh, Cole Becker and Yoder on the podium here today. Spike especially, considering the pressure that he was under for much of that race, that was a very classy drive from him. Well, we clearly didn't have the pace, but uh, still a very good result in second place. It was a real testament of how quick you can just put it right down, first lap, no warm-up. <laughs> That's right, it's time to go racing from Elkhart Lake, the National Park of Speed. You know, we had high expectations through the season. I'm really happy how things have went. I think the cars have performed well, and hopefully the teams are happy with it. The series has exceeded our expectation. I'm very excited with how it's maturing, it's starting to come together. traditional NASCAR route, but yeah, I was uh, part of the Toyota racing program since 2020, early 2020 is when I signed, and it's been really cool to see the development of this series come along, and you know, I really wish there was something like this when I was growing up, because it's such a great asset for young drivers to be able to come and race, and very diverse as well, so that's been really cool to see. It's really been staggering to see how, how tough the competition is really with a lot of guys coming from different momentum-based series and something similar to this. To be able to come and compete against those guys and see what makes them so good at what they do, it was really cool and to be able to learn every single time I went out. Drake Kemper trying not to lose two positions. Contact there with the number 55 of Spike Kohlbecker, and that's going to hold him out, and Drake Kemper's going to lose three positions in the course of two corners. I went to Road America, fresh off of a, a stomach disease infection thing that just poured me. And that was tough. I was almost passing out in the car the whole time. It was it was really rough. That 99 is trailing a serious piece of bodywork too. That's not good. That could wind up being a little bit dangerous. It almost looks like it's making contact there with that left rear tire. That could be very, very sketchy there. But it was at least a, a step forward that like, okay, I can still do this. That's good. I've got to say, I'm very impressed here with Weston Workman. But ooh. Almost cutting the course there. Workman off and going through the kink. He's going to be able to hold on to it. So, whoa, well, we got a pass for the lead potentially here up to the inside. Wagner somehow get a good run off of turn 14. Gresham's going to run very, very wide as he comes back onto the surface here at this point. I went defensive. You know, I didn't think I really had any other option. You can't leave the door open. Tyler Gonzalez looks to the outside, thinks about maybe a move down into the inside, but decides against it. But crucially, Joe, Wagner holding on to that fastest lap of the race. Mia Lovell continuing to drive here with that damage. Mia doing a fantastic job and starting to put some pressure here onto the back of Tyler Wettengel. A nice little four-car battle. Oh, that's the number 68 of Mia Lovell hard into the wall. I'm afraid probably race over the way that it looks like it's wobbling. And well, yeah, with the bumper looking like that, I don't know that she'll be able to get back out. Wagner's not giving him any whiff of it. Tyler here, not looking like he's going to be later on the binders, looking for the crossover move. I think he's got it. He's got at least a little bit of a crossover as they climb the hill up into turn six. I kind of knew he was going to try to cross me over. He almost, you know, got through easier than I expected. Gonzalez has to be later on the binders. Here comes down to the inside of pressure. Wagner. Wagner tries to get back a little bit of Tyler's own medicine, but it's not going to work. That's going to be Gonzalez up into the lead. We were able to make it a two-car battle, and then we had a great race at the end. Gresham's such a great driver. We swapped the lead almost corner to corner on those last couple laps. 
Whoa, but he's gonna have to fight hard because here coming down the inside comes Wagner. Adam once again, Tyler around the outside using the paved runoff. He gave me the space to race him. Through the carousel is on the outside, which isn't preferred. I ended up running a little bit wide. Gresham Wagner says, I don't care. I want to make him run. They're almost touching mirrors as they come out of the carousel side by side. Who is going to blink first? Neither of them do, but it's going to be Gonzalez that's able to carry the line. Tyler is somebody that's super quick. He definitely knows what he's doing when it comes to side by side racing, you know, attacking, defending. But you can trust him, right? He's he's not somebody that you know gets in D or just goes and moves you out of the way. He races you super hard, but but super fair. Every time I race him, I know it's going to be a good hard battle. It's going to be close at the line. It's going to be Gonzalez by 76 thousandths of a second. It came right down to the end between them. Workman will take the podium in third position, and Cole Becker fourth ahead of Corey Heim. Nice run there, up to fifth place. It's Jackson Bell, P7. I was able to kind of naturally progress and get a lot better throughout the weekend, and we ended up uh, finishing with the top five. So uh, I, was, I was pretty you know, proud of that, just from where we started. Tony Breidner beat uh, Mia Lovell today, finishing 18th. I'm definitely getting more comfortable with the car. It's all tricky because we're going to like new tracks like every time we go to a race. So I have to almost not like start at square one, but kind of like learn the track and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I definitely feel comfortable with the car. I just have to get a little bit better with my road course racing, but having fun doing it. Another victory on the season, but you had to fight for that one. We just had a super hard, clean, really good race, and I'm glad we could come out on top. Will we get the same sort of action again here today, especially considering we have a mixed up field due to an interruption in qualifying? So on Sunday, we started 15th. Uh, we just missed qualifying. I was trying to figure out where I wanted to be on track and, and try and get a good draft off somebody, but a yellow came out and it ended up ending the session, so I wasn't able to get a good lap. It's a decent getaway there from Rogers, but Wagner was right on it as well. They're going to start to pull away here a little bit from Spike Kohlbecker. Wagner's not willing to give this one up. Here's the interesting thing about Tyler. He's only 5.6 seconds behind the leaders right now. So yes, he's still in 10th. He's already managed to do this without losing too much time. I, I wondered yesterday if he would genuinely be a threat for the win, and I I'd say that's still a real possibility. Two for one move there for Tyler Gonzalez. Oh my goodness, he's already up into second place. I can't believe this guy sometimes. Here comes Gonzalez down to the inside. He's got the speed. And dare I say this, Joe, I think Wagner may have let him go there a little bit. I went out there, battled up as fast as I could and got right behind Gresham and I actually ended up leading a couple laps. I don't know if he got a little bit sideways or if he just ran a bit wide in turn one, but he lost a bit of momentum on the exit and so, I just figured out, I don't know if I'm going to have another shot. Now here comes the move for Gresham Wagner, down to the inside of turn three. He's going to get the position away from Tyler Gonzalez. I knew he was going to try to Uber under me on the corner. Slowed down a bit earlier, held it a bit tighter, and tried to cover off that exit. And at that point, I just needed to hold on through the second half of the lap. After coming second yesterday, it's going to be Gresham Wagner on the top step of the podium here today. At the end of it, Gresham was able to walk away from me on that last lap. Gresham Wagner able to take the victory here today. Good fight and probably a pretty good birthday present. I guess yesterday was a bit of a rehearsal on uh, you know how to do it a bit better. And you know, I got second yesterday, won today, so I'm happy. Be a level with the uh, fastest female driver today, taking 14th position. The next two rounds are Sebring and Indy. Sebring's basically my home track, and I've been here more times than basically any other racetrack. Indy, such a fun, iconic track. Uh, it's huge in motorsports, so I just can't wait to get there and, uh, and see what we can do in this finale.